Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Toasted Synapse and I will now talk about the negative parts of Overwatch. Uh, do take note, as in the case with all of my first impressions, uh, this is not a review, it's merely a combination of objective and subjective aspects that were brought to my attention when playing the beta. Uh, you can find my pure gameplay videos uninterrupted by commentary on my channel under the Overwatch playlist. Links are in the description and in the YouTube cards. Now, again, this is a beta, not a fully released game, so things are not final, they are subject to change. But Blizzard's history tells us that once they get that hype train moving and release beta copies to YouTubers and streamers, I don't think much will change as the game is scheduled uh, for release sometime in Spring 2016. This is on the PC for the price of $40 or your original equivalent. Uh, also on the Xbox One and PS4 for $60. As many of you know, it is not a free-to-play game, like Blizzard's uh, last two IPs, Hearthstone and Heroes of the Storm. It is a team-based and class-based uh, first-person shooter, similar to uh, Team Fortress 2. Uh, every class has its personalized set of uh, skills and its own role in team combat. Now. Team combat is all that you will be doing in this game as it is multiplayer only, again, like TF2. It does not have a campaign. Uh, you buy it once and you own all of the heroes. As of the time of this recording, there are 21 characters available in the beta. Now, we are here to talk about some concerns that I noticed while playing the beta. I know that a lot of people are already concerned about Overwatch's business model. Yeah, the fact that besides the base price, players can purchase skins for their characters. Uh, this is not a new concept, the idea of skins is out there for many games. Uh, what people are actually angry about is that they also want access to the skins if they're already paying $40. Now, the fact that Overwatch will have cosmetic microtransactions uh, brings it pretty close to Counter-Strike in this regard, uh, but much more expensive obviously. And I don't believe that Blizzard is stupid enough to place uh, future characters or future maps behind a paywall. Although, that is of course what people are really concerned about. Coming up with new skins is probably all that they will do down the line. And I actually think that this is fair, considering that this business model can help support the dev team down the road. Uh, some rich players buy skins. Blizzard gets money, Blizzard uses that money to develop new content. A win for everybody, even the people that don't buy skins. Paying for new maps, new characters or expansion packs do nothing more than to split the community, so I hope they are not going down this route. Now, for some other issues. Uh, there's perhaps too much walking involved after we, you respawn. They maybe need to rethink the death timer, uh, make it longer or maybe leave it as it is and offer closer respawn points. I think the players spend too much time just running back into the fight. Sure, uh, this way there's less zerging but similarly uh, there could be less zerging if you increase the death timers and put the respawn points closer. That way you get a breath of fresh air uh, when you can look at the match stats and plan your strategy better for when you respawn and not spend 30 seconds running towards the fight. Uh, sure, some characters are faster than others, but uh, that's where balancing comes in. I'm sure that they can figure something out. The maximum FOV to my liking is a little low, especially for people that are into Quake style of games. Uh, the option menu doesn't really have a number next to the FOV slider, but from what I can tell just looking at it, uh, the max FOV is somewhere around 90. It would be nice to have the max FOV at 120, so that people of all preferences can set up the game accordingly. I personally would like to play somewhere between 100 and 110. Okay, now the game is a little bit too flashy. I know some of my friends actually get headaches from playing more than 2 or 3 matches. Again, this may also relate to the FOV being too narrow, but overall in this department there's not much you can do with game customization. I would also like to see UI customization, weapon model size, uh, movable UI elements, uh, turning certain displays on or off, making the ammo counter bigger, 
etc. Maybe this can help people that experience discomfort while playing and also pro players down the line that would like to customize the game to their liking. And another thing, if Blizzard really wants to succeed with this game, especially when it comes to it being an eSport, because they have mentioned it, they need to sort out FOV. Uh, as well as flashiness and the overall easy to understand spectator mode. From their last IPs, uh, Hearthstone is easy to watch and enjoyable to watch and thus has many views on Twitch and YouTube. Heroes of the Storm, another game that got pushed actually towards esports, is not that highly watched. It's not that entertaining to viewers. Now, will Overwatch have the same problem? Probably not in the entertaining department, I think that the problem will be in the observer department. Will viewers understand what's going on when so many things are flashing at once? Uh, they need to add that option and they also uh, need to put a uh, nice observer mode together. Next item on the list, lacking a campaign. Uh, this is a major downside considering that they are charging 40 bucks or 40 euros for the game at release. Uh, besides that, there are only two game types and a handful of maps right now. I have no doubt that more are coming in the future, especially now that, you know, you have the option of pre-ordering the game. Uh, Blizzard gets the money, they create new game types and maps, maybe. It would be cool to have something extra, you know, besides the multiplayer maps, like a challenge system or a story mission for each character. Uh, that will definitely boost the game in my opinion, especially if they include achievements and skins for completion on a hard difficulty or something. If they add that, I think they are growing closer to that $40 uh, price tag. Also, let us talk about some concerns that people had with Overwatch being actually $40 instead of a free-to-play game, like they expected. Uh, personally, I'm not against any model. I think they're both fine, although the game's current state, I don't believe that 40 bucks is a fair number to be asking. The rules for any business model are that the game needs to be worth it, first of all, and it shouldn't be pay to win, obviously. And most importantly, devs need to be adding new content along the line. If we were to take a trip down memory lane and remember that TF2 originally had the same business model when it released in 2007, uh, you had to pay $15 upfront in order to play the game and you had access to all the characters. Sometimes there were sales that lowered that price until 2011 when it became free to play. I know Blizzard doesn't have the intention of making any of their o older pay to play games free to play. A small exception here being how they treated the StarCraft 2, first they announced that people that didn't buy the game can still play some co-op games or fun little arcade games for free. They just uh, couldn't play the actual PvP ladder which it, the game is built on. And now basically uh, they released their new expansion Legacy of the Void as a standalone game, meaning that you don't need to own the original StarCraft 2 game or the other expansions. Uh, something that for some reason uh, they are not doing with World of Warcraft. Uh, anyway, I digress. Uh, it took TF2 4 years from having a $15 price tag to it being free. But there have been many other things that happened since 2011 uh, that kind of changed the gaming scene. Uh, we've seen plenty of MMOs switching to free to play. We've seen a ton of games and Blizzard games included launching with the free-to-play business model from the start and we can see that many of these games are actually very popular right now. Uh, even CSGO that is not a free-to-play game and is very popular right now can be bought for $3 on almost any Steam sale or $10 for people that can't wait. Uh, the conclusion here being that you don't have to spend a lot of money to get into a popular multiplayer game. And that's a logical business strategy when you think about it. Developers and publishers want their servers to be full. They want to attract as many fans as possible. Uh, then they can promote their skins or other uh, aesthetic only items in order to further develop the game. Uh, it makes sense. Why is Fallout 4 not $10 or even free to play? Well, because it's focused on a single player experience and it's entirely another business model. 
Grand Theft Auto V falls in between these categories having both an enjoyable single player experience and a fun multiplayer component. The same can be said about StarCraft 2 actually, except you have the option of playing for free some game modes at least. Now, <laughs> these trends are not only felt by me. Every gamer has come to expect a certain type of price tag being placed on a certain type of experience. I think that Blizzard is kind of jumping the gun with Overwatch and I don't think that the masses will be receiving it very well. Now with only a small number of game modes and a higher than expected price tag, not to mention the fright that they gave people when announcing that the game will have microtransactions, I think that there is a chance that servers will be emptying out and people will be waiting 10 minutes to be queued up with other players, especially after the hype dies out. Uh, one saving grace could be a successful esports scene that will get people watching the game if they manage to mend the issues that I've discussed earlier in this video, a uh, good ob observer system, and you know, if people watch the game, probably they want to buy the game for themselves. But this flame needs to be nursed from the very beginning, because if the hype train crashes and there's nobody around to pick up the pieces, by the time they try to push it towards esports scene, there won't be anyone there to give a damn. Overall, the game is fun. But will it stand the test of time? It is like Force mentioned in one of his videos when he referenced Overwatch taking the Team Fortress 2 crowd. Because Blizzard is clearly trying to market this game to that TF2 crowd and get as many of those fans as possible, as well as their own Blizzard fans that will play any of their games. Now, if we were to look at every Blizzard game, what they did exactly is look at the market, they saw what's popular and developed their new game in that genre, giving it that Blizzard finesse and polish that we come to expect from them. But with Overwatch I feel it's not the same thing like when WoW took over the EverQuest crowd, because if we were to compare the popularity of EverQuest at its time and Team Fortress right now, there's basically no doubt that EverQuest was a big thing, featured in news, known by almost every gamer back then and even people that weren't gamers. So they took a popular game like EverQuest and made the ultimate MMO, the sole MMO that will define that genre. But in comparison to EverQuest, is TF2 in the same basket? Maybe not, is it worth taking and defining a genre around it? It's not the same thing. And if you look at our, their other games like Hearthstone vs Magic the Gathering or Heroes of the Storm vs Dota or League of Legends, what did they do with these games? Well, they gave them that Blizzard twist. Besides the Warcraft lore, which is huge, they streamlined most of the features and made the games more accessible to new players. Are they doing the same thing with Overwatch? Well, I've played Team Fortress 2 and there are many similarities to it, but I don't see that Blizzard twist. Not yet, at least. Uh, same capture the point or escort the payload, and a similar style of team play, you know, you have your tank guy at the front being healed by a beam that charges up an ultimate ability, you have your turret guy, your sniper guy, your rocket guy, you, you get the point. Uh, the only thing that's different is the hero roster and their abilities. Sure, some are similar to TF2 like I mentioned, but some are different. Uh, the abilities and the ultimates clearly play a huge role in Overwatch. And let's actually talk about the hero roster here. Does it even compare with the quality of lore we came to expect from Blizzard? Uh, sure, Blizzard has a very good lore department that tells us all about Hanzo, for example, and the fact that he has a brother and whatnot. But is that even comparable to the amount of lore behind Thrall, for example? Or the TF2 heavy weapons guy and his Russian origins and minigun? Uh, sure, we are seeing a lot of hype at the moment, people that love certain characters and know everything there is to know about them, cosplayers, but you know, the question is, are they the masses? Is this enough? And the fact that Overwatch doesn't have single player or a campaign or any cutscenes that help get future player invested in characters, will you even care that Hanzo's bow is made from a magic tree from the land where his mother was born or will you just care about pawning noobs with headshots from that bow. I'm not implying here that these facts constitute a major fail do not buy warning. 
I'm just saying that it is not comparable to the strategy that Blizzard took with its other games when concerning a specific market. Heck, right now TF2 has uh, much more coverage for the heavy weapons guy as well as for the other characters and their funny cosmetic items. They have those uh, short funny videos, uh, memes popped up and uh, now of course time has passed and they are not that popular anymore. But if Blizzard wants to rise to that level of popularity, I'm just saying that they need to do some game changes and marketing strategies, like adding new and unique, there's a word that Blizzard likes to use a lot in their games, unique features, challenges, uh, make cool videos and work on uh, that streamline aspect that people have come to expect from Blizzard games. Then you can get more people interested in the lore and in the characters and when you'll be setting those cosmetic items people will actually care more and they will want to buy them. I guess in time we will see if they manage to take that route. It is very much doable knowing the power and the fans that Blizzard have behind them. So in conclusion Overwatch does have the necessary components to be considered a good game. It's responsive, the graphics are nice, audio is also good, it's polished and the team play is satisfying. It's a Blizzard game, you know how those work, but it needs something backing it up, otherwise the hype train will die out very soon. That is just my opinion anyway, <laughs> please let me know what you think in the comments below. If you enjoyed this discussion and want more first impressions or let's plays, please like, subscribe and share the video. You can find links in the description below as well as in the YouTube cards that will take you to my playlists. This has been Toasted Synapse, I am signing out.